time goes by quickly. An individual has to choose what he or she wants and go for it. It's only after you've chosen your fate that you discover your inner strength. One must look deep within to find their identity. Some only find a hollow shell that develops its form according to the people around it. However, many think themselves as invincible, but it only takes one thing to bring them down to ground level, whether it be love, death, or tragedy in their lives. As I walk down the solitary beach, sand gathers beneath my feet. Thoughts are going through my mind about the many things happening in my life. Just a few months ago, I was an individual who was very aware of my identity. Yet, now that I've exposed myself to love, I've become a soul guided by emotions. So on occasion, I find myself depressed. Then at other times, I'm joyful. It always begins with a man. However, in my case, it was a boy. A boy who didn't know what he wanted. It seems at this age, many guys are trapped in this realm that they have to sleep or be exposed to as many girls as possible. That's before they actually commit to one. They go around hurting girls who could possibly be the right ones for them. Then by the time they're ready to commit, they find this poor soul who is only out to get what they can get from them. On the other hand, girls at this time in their lives are focused and ready to decide who will be their husband for life. You see, conquering poor souls is not our objective. Our objective is to find that person who's going to treat us right. Only we always seem to be stuck with that guy who has chosen to conquer whoever he can before he decides to commit. The sun is shining on the still water. The humidity in the air is allowing the slight wind to add a cool feeling to my head. Seagulls are flying overhead seeking food. They seem so peaceful, unlike myself. This is supposed to be my time of rest and relaxation. It seemed as though I could see us being together like yesterday. What's up, he would say. And like a fool, I'd say, oh, nothing, knowing good and well that something was bothering me. He would always have a way of getting me to forget about what I was mad about. Most of the time, he would tell a corny joke or just let me have my way. This was the first indication I had of him having control over me. But like a fool, I struck it off. I didn't pay much attention to the signs. When telltale instances came up, 
like him fooling around with some other girl. He always conveniently explained the situation to me before I heard about it from someone else. This gave him an opportunity to bring it back up again when confusion struck. It's so funny how guys such as these learn at an early age how to manipulate your mind. Many times these guys have some good qualities about themselves, just to name a few. Intelligence, potential ambition, focused goals, wonderfully built bodies, good jobs, and let us not forget, they are all gorgeous. Like we all know, women of our stature are not going to be seen with a pitiful soul. These qualities always seem to come up when you've just had an argument with your man, as you call him on many occasions. However, what you don't know is that there are a lot of other women calling your man theirs. As I reached the boardwalk leading to the parking lot, I realized that it was almost 8 o'clock. I was going to see a friend of mine tonight. It had just been the other day since we talked, but we needed to catch up on what had been going on in the last couple of hours. Driving in my car brings a peace over me. It was one of the few things I allowed myself to think as the songs on the radio tapped into my thoughts. My friend, Renee, had been telling me that for the last couple of days that I needed to focus on myself and God instead of always falling for some no good boy. Every time she mentioned this, I would pretend like I had taken her advice and just continue to do what I wanted. It's funny. Most of the time she would be right, and I would only end up learning from experience. Why I just didn't listen to her in the beginning? I have no idea. Pulling up into the driveway, I could feel a long conversation about to begin. As I reached the door and rung the doorbell, I had a feeling Renee wanted to go out. Maybe to a club. I didn't want to let her know she guessed right, so I changed the subject.
some reason, I didn't want to tell her what had happened. Because I knew she was going to say, I told you so. To be truthful, I just didn't feel like hearing it. It was funny how she could give me all this good advice and couldn't take it herself. Renee seems to get in these moods sometimes. I think it's because she needs a man, but she begs to differ with me. She wants to appear to others as a person that has everything in control, but unfortunately, she doesn't. That's probably why we're friends, because we're so much alike. At about 10 o'clock, most of the many eligible men come out, and the many women like me begin to detect them like radars. Right in my view was a gorgeous six-foot man. Of course, he was with his woman, who with my help wouldn't be in the picture very long. She looked as if she was holding onto him too tightly as it was. Renee was looking at me as if she knew what I was getting ready to do. My first step was to make eye contact. You know the game we all play when we're trying to attain a possible victim. I was on the prowl and he was my prey. Slowly, I transformed my walk so that the sensual switching of my butt could be noticed. As I looked back, I could see that his eyes were doing what I wanted them to do. Focus on me. Slowly I approached this luscious man that was going to be caught in my web soon. His eyes were deep and piercing as they scanned the whole length of my body. Just then, I flashed a smile that I knew would make him melt. Rushing up against him, I began my script. A red light flashed in my head. Something about this story wasn't right. I continued to play games with him. I let him know I was interested and got his phone number. I just had this feeling that I wouldn't be calling him unless I got bored. I knew what she was saying was true, but for the time being, I had to learn the hard way. Pulling up into my driveway put a damper on my mood because I knew I would have time to think about Lawrence. Lawrence, the gentleman I thought loved me, but found out differently. 
When we met, he was so considerate and loving. It was too much for me to bear. He would compliment me, take me out, listen to my problems, and give me advice. This made me believe that he was the guy for me. Unfortunately, he showed me differently. What's really crazy is he doesn't understand what he's doing himself. But the fact still remains, he hurt me. The living room is so peaceful at night. No one's walking around talking, laughing, or criticizing. My sister went to sleep probably about 10.30. She is somewhat a loner and to herself. The couch is much more comfortable than those hard seats at the theater. The heat going through my body reminds me of the times when Lawrence and I would sit around talking about what we wanted out of life. Lately, it seems like conversations have turned into, hi, how are you doing, and what are we going to do tonight? In the far corner of my room, an alarming noise blurred out a seemingly harmless contraption. My heart beat faster. Hanging up the phone in his face felt so good. Yet only two minutes later, I had doubts about whether I should have taken him to work. This is a sign of caring for a man too much. I don't know why smart young women feel they have to cater to the needs of their close male friends. Every time they call with a problem, I guess we feel with such a limited amount of good African American men, we must try and hold on to the ones we've been so fortunate to receive. Yet, these men that we treat so well end up taking us for granted. As a result, we enter other relationships with the mentality that we won't give our partner ourselves completely. Instead, they receive that artificial clone we have constructed over time. Let's go.